Greetings, friends. Sean here, scriptureandprophecy.com. Thought I would do a quick little vlog because I had a few minutes on my lunch break today. And just kind of talk about some of the things that are up and coming uh, on the podcast. We're finishing the book of Exodus soon. Just started the book of Zechariah, and I think uh, we're going to continue our prophecy theme uh, towards the end of each week, Thursday or Friday. Studying the Old Testament prophets, as lo- uh, along with the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, some of those testaments of the patriarchs that were discovered with the Dead Sea Scrolls, prophetic books, stuff like that. Um, hang on here, traffic is insane. Or as I, oh, in addition to that, we're going to be finishing the book of Exodus, and I'm thinking about starting the book of Job as well as our early week study. And then, of course, if you're subscribed to the podcast through SoundCloud, iTunes, something like that, I'm rebroadcasting other series, currently rebroadcasting the Revelation series that we did a little over a year ago. Uh, And uh, we'll rebroadcast probably the Gospel of John or something like that next. So, coming up in a few weeks, uh, September 10th, I believe, is when it starts. Although, and I'm talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Although, it's supposed to be based off the sighting of the moon. Um, You may have heard it's uh, also referred to as the day and hour uh, uh, that nobody knows. You've heard heard that theorized. And the reason for that is because you have to see the moon and all that stuff before you can declare that it's official, that it's the Feast of Trumpets, Uh, but according to the calendar, it should be the 10th or the 11th. It's a two-day festival. Interesting thing about the Feast of Trumpets is the most mysterious of all the feasts, in my opinion. The the Bible doesn't even tell us why we celebrate it. It just tells us to take a Shabbat that day, to restrain from your normal work, um, but it doesn't tell us what the, the purpose of it. It's very, very mysterious. Many people think that'll be the, the day of the rapture. Um, of course, we don't know what year or which day, you know, because of depending on when it falls. So it still qualifies for a day and hour that no man knoweth. Of course, Jesus said, I'm coming at a time when you think not. He said to watch, lest you be caught off guard, Right? come at a day and an hour you think not. Feast of Trumpets is also known as the Day of Shouting, which goes along with the rapture theme, you know. Um, John heard a shout. Um, you know, there's going to be the trumpet blast, a shofar blast, which is associated with the Feast of Trumpets. Um, the bridegroom, you know, there's a shout, the bridegroom cometh, the uh, the you know the, you've got the parable of the foolish and wise and foolish maidens, virgins, whatever. Lots of association with it, um, and like every year, I'll do a podcast on it. The Bible doesn't really tell us what, what the purpose of it is. Um, there's actually an example of a sermon given in the Old Testament on the Feast of Trumpets, but you have to know when the Feast of Trumpets is, according to the scriptures, uh, to even catch it, to even realize it. Um, I believe I covered it in my podcast last year, but I'll do it again this year. Uh, I believe in Nehemiah chapter 8, you have a sermon given by Nehemiah and Ezra to the people, telling them not to grieve. You know, they read the law to them, telling them, telling them don't grieve. You know, the people are, and the people hear the law being read to them, and they just start to grieve because they realize, you know, that they haven't been walking According to God's law, but then they're told by Ezra and Nehemiah, you know, to to drink milkshakes, basically, you know, to drink sweet things and to rejoice and to be joyful. It's just such an in, it's such a weird feast because it's also known as the known to the Jews as a day of judgment, a day of judgment. The rapture and the day of judgment could be synonymous, right? You know, I look at the current climate of the world in the United States of America, and you know, every year I watch the Feast of Trumpets very attentively. 
I don't get myself as worked up as I used to because of, you know, just I've made that mistake before. I've had that disappointment before. So I don't get worked up like I used to, but I watch it closely. Wondering, could this be the year? What's going to happen? Is anything going to happen? Usually I'm at work doing my work and on a, one of my side screens I'll have the uh, Wailing Wall pulled up in Jerusalem. Watching it, listening for the show for a blast and stuff like that. I had some other thoughts that are escaping me. Known as the Day of Judgment. Yeah, the current climate, you know, with the current climate and the way things are. I would expect the Day of Judgment to be very, very soon. Maybe this year. I just, I don't know. I And I go through this every year where I'm like, man, I really think something's up this year. And I think that again, that that possibility is there again this year. I don't know. But I'll do a podcast on the Feast of Trumpets. We'll be looking at it. You know, all these things are a foreshadow of Messiah. They all point to Him. But a case can be made that Jesus, Yeshua, he fulfilled the spring feast and has yet to fulfill, possibly, the fall feast. And many believe, and with good reason. There's good arguments to be made that the next feast to be fulfilled would be the Feast of Trumpets, which would involve a shouting, a trumpet, shofar, uh, potentially judgment, but also joy. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a problem. You know, I have a problem with people saying, it's it's this year, it's 2018. Remember, if you remember in 2015, 14 and 15 and 16, you know, many of us were falling for that. 2012, many of us were falling. It's this year, the Feast of Trumpets, here's all the math, here's how it adds up. We don't know. But we can. We certainly know the season, and we're either in the season or approaching the season. Or the season is near. If it's not our generation, it's the next one for sure. I don't see how it couldn't be our generation because I don't see how the world can continue to survive. I mean, society is melting down globally. I mean, being mentally ill is now trendy. And what I mean by that is the thought processes of the general public society is, what you know, we would have considered that way of thinking 20 years ago as mental illness. Like, man, there's something wrong with you if you think that. And definitely 100 years ago or 200 years ago. So anyway, we're, I'll be talking. I'll be obviously doing a podcast about this. We'll read. We'll read uh, from the scriptures about the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, we'll read Nehemiah chapter eight, I believe, if I'm getting, if I have the right chapter, and I believe I do. And we'll discuss the Feast of Trumpets like we do every year, and we'll theorize and ponder and wonder. We'll keep our eyes open for it. Um. You know, I don't believe that you have to celebrate the feasts like some of the Hebrew roots movements teach, but I do believe you should know what they are. You should know when they are, what they are, why they are, how they point to Messiah. You know, all that stuff is important to understand. And you should care about all of these things if you care about God, if you care about the Word, and if you care about end-time prophecy because you want... You can't understand end time prophecy if you don't understand this stuff. And this is why so many so many people are confused about end time prophecies because they didn't they don't know any of this. They don't understand it at all. They think, you know, they think like I used to think, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Oh, I read the Left Behind books. I must be, I must know what's going on. I watched the DVD. No, study the scriptures. That's how you'll know. Well, anyway, I just wanted to do a short vlog. You know, the re- it's, it, the demand for these, I'm surprised by, that people enjoy them. I don't know, I honestly don't know why. But I'm happy to do them, you know, once or twice a month. And uh, hopefully they encourage you. Um, you know, anytime we can come together and talk about God and 
ponder and wonder about these things and speculate about these things, it, it draws you closer to Him, and that's the goal. For you to be closer to the Father, for you to be closer to His Son, Jesus Christ, that's the goal. Uh, I want to thank all of you that support the broadcast and support this mission of truth. Couldn't do it without you. Uh, donations, things in the mail, Patreon subscribers. Uh, it, it takes care of me and my family in ways that you can't even imagine. Um, and I certainly, certainly the podcast wouldn't be possible without your help and your support. And things are get, it's getting tough. It's getting harder and harder to do this because there's a lot more pushback and there's a lot more censorship and it's going to get, I'm telling you, it's going to get even harder and more expensive to try to make this happen because they're trying, they're going to start by stifling people in alternative media and say, well, I hate speech, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, people like me who, who preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, who don't, who don't preach a fuzzy, lovey, dovey, we're all going to heaven because, you know, God is only love and you know, you're going to be rich if you believe in Jesus, you know. Those people will be fine, but people who preach the, the true gospel of Jesus Christ who, and who, who call people to repentance, who call the church to repent, to turn back to God, who call evil evil and sin sin, those people are going to be censored. And I've already been censored on, in, in many ways by YouTube and other things. And uh, it's, it's only a matter of time before they start completely shutting it down. So your support is, is much appreciated. That's all I got. Peace and grace be with all of you. Please leave a comment below what you think about this video. And God bless.